Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, July 15th at 7.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. It's day six of the eruption in Iceland on the Reykjanes Peninsula, and here we can see it appears as if lava output is increasing. And that's the big story. Keep calm. It's boom time. A new outbreak of Canadian wildfires is sending a plume of unhealthy smoke into the U.S. Once again, Minnesota and Wisconsin issue air quality alerts amid a new round of Canadian smoke and wildfires. Let's take a look. Over 100 wildfires now being located in one small region of British Columbia. So take a look at that. There is an uptick in all of Western Canada, but the good news is there is some moisture coming. And the winds are taking most of that to the north. Just a small residual band is going to be coming down into the central U.S. And there is the precipitation uh, all throughout Canada, especially in western Canada where we need it. It's looking like up to five or six inches in some areas, maybe even more. And also, take a notice of the four corners here. By the end of July, it looks like the monsoon is going to be kicking in. Thousands in St. Louis area still without power Saturday after Friday night storm. And more people are dealing with power outages across the country with downed trees and another round of severe weather. Here we are at Power Outage US, 34,000 without power in Kansas, 26,000 in Missouri, and just 13,000 in California, so not looking too bad. But the peach crop is looking decimated. In Georgia, the peach state is out of peaches, and this is because of freezing temperatures in the spring ding ding and lexington peach stand grapples with the impacts of the late season freeze as well and peach crops struggle in south carolina from late season frosts and in all of these articles they blame climate change global warming for the losses and also the peach crop in the ozarks also impacted by those late season frosts not by global warming El Nino, essentially a slam dunk to persist through the winter. And that means, well, there it is. There is the probabilistic map. It means we could see, well, more moisture in the Four Corners region. Uh, let's take a look at Hurricane Calvin. It is barreling its way towards the Big Island. And as the spaghetti models agree, it is going to cross the Big Island sometime Tuesday night and Wednesday morning as a tropical storm, not as a full-fledged hurricane. Here are the spaghetti models. They're all tightening up on the Big Island. Severe and prolonged heat wave nears peak. Thank God. And all the links will be below. Extremely hot and dangerous weekend. Heavy rainfall in the Northeast, which is the last thing they need. Flash and flood warnings are up for that entire region. Excessive heat warnings and heat advisories stretch from the West Coast to the Gulf Coast due to an extremely dangerous heat wave that may break record high temperatures. May. Yeah, we'll see. Thunderstorms, some severe with heavy rain, will impact the southern high plains and Ohio Valley and the Appalachians. Poor air quality conditions are expected across parts of the northern high plains and the Midwest. So heads up, there is the poor air quality in gray. Hey, hey. And the heat advisories wrapping around the edge of the southwest of the nation. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Largest rumbler I can see is a 5.1 in Kurishk, Russia. Uh, overall, no quakes of note. There was a flurry of activity near Yellowstone. I'm sure got a lot of people's panties in a bunch. Now, two large eruptions to report on that the mainstream is really not talking about. Alaska Shishaldin volcano spews ash high enough to draw weather service warnings for pilots. According to the Alaska Volcano Observatory, a significant explosion occurred on July 14th at 1.09 a.m., producing an ash cloud soaring up 40,000 feet above sea level. A second small explosion happened at 7 a.m., just reaching 15,000. And an even bigger boom coming from Bagana in Papua New Guinea. A 54,000-foot blast that no one is talking about. In fact, it just hit the airwaves. An explosive eruption at Bagana all the way back on July 7th 
sent large ash, gas, and steam plumes high out to high altitudes and caused significant ash fall in local communities. A report issued on the autonomous Bougainville government on July 10th noted that a significant ash began falling during 2000 and 2010 on July 7th and covered most areas in the Vulcoy, Gotana, Kordomenko, La Ruma, and Astelima villages. That's crazy. It's likely that sulfur dioxide detection by satellites in 8th indicated that the plume was likely a mix of gases, ice, and ash had risen to 59,000 feet, reaching the tropopause. Ashfall reportedly continued until the 9th of July, and the ashfall covered vegetation, destroying bushes and gardens, contaminating rivers and streams used for washing and drinking, and residents had to drink from coconuts and use fresh groundwater accessible through bamboo pipes. So, a big boom at Bagana, and I couldn't find any pictures. But we do have a picture of that Shishaldin blast of 40,000. Now, Bagana can erupt all the way up to VEI-4, which it did back in 1952. So we're keeping a close eye on this eruption as it was short-lived and blasted all the way up into the tropopause, 59,000 feet. And another eruption going on, which we started off the podcast with, is the Fagradosval volcano. It is still closed due to human health hazards from the eruption, toxic gases from burning mosses, as well as the eruption itself. And the eruption continues with new cone forming, and we just saw a picture that looked just like that. The eruption continues with little changes. Magma supply is stable and arriving at the vent from where most of it is diverted into the main lava flow, which has now covered the old eruption from last year. So it's moving quite rapidly. Let's take another visit over here at the volcano. And this is another angle where you can see as a plateau building here in front and several lava waterfalls to get to the main flow. So the area is still closed. You can see how much of that fog and lays and other toxic gases are in the area on all sides. So it could be low winds as well. We'll link you to all of these videos, including the live stream below the video. Space weather news update. We do have a... Uh, Potential geomagnetic storm in the forecast on July 18th, which is three days from now. The last geomagnetic event barely broke 4.5. In fact, it only got to 4.33, so very little in Aurora. And the sun is quite weak. That large sunspot just puffing out small M2.2 flares. Very quiet on the sun during solar max. Now, the UPS strike could be the costliest in the U.S. in a century according to a new study. Plus, we won't have any way to get stuff from Amazon, for goodness sakes. The EU is set to drop a ban of thousands of hazardous chemicals after industry pressure. Now, the European Union was one of the leading world powers to actually ban toxic chemicals in food. But the European Commission is poised to break a promise to outlaw all but the most essential of Europe, Europe's hazardous chemicals in leaked documents. The pledge to ban the most harmful chemicals in consumer products, allowing their use only where it is absolutely essential, was a flagship component of the European Green Deal when it was launched in 2020. It was expected that between 7,000 and 12,000 hazardous substances would be prohibited, but they backed out of the deal and things like forever chemicals and are poor and polyfluoroalkali substances or PFOSs, which can accumulate in nature and human bodies will continue to be put in your food. Did you hear Tesla has built the ugliest thing ever? The first cyber truck at Giga, Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. And well, it's looking fantastic. Join us after the podcast uh, to watch the Toba supervolcano eruption. If you ever wanted to know what a supervolcano, a supervolcanic eruption was, about the Toba bottleneck theory, join us in just a few moments over at Magnetic Reversal News for a full expose. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. Oh, yeah. And smash that thumbs up. Yeah.